What is the most effective way of reaching your peak fitness? Is it training indoors or outdoors? We thought we'd discuss the facts. Well, firstly, one of the biggest advantages of indoor training is the quality. And by that, I mean that every second you spend riding on an indoor trainer, you can press on the pedals and make it count. So no waiting at traffic lights, no stopping at road junctions, and no getting stuck in traffic. And we have our own indoor training success story right here in the GCN offices, because Matt used indoor training to great effect during the last part of his racing career. He took all the quality from multi-hour road rides and condensed it into super hard indoor training sessions. And he got screaming fit. All right, fair point. Can't argue with that. I must admit, I do hate it when I have to freewheel in the middle of an interval and watch my average power plummet. But as for long rides, they can be really enjoyable. Great fun, in fact. Long rides with intervals are fantastic. Well, yes, but working hard Reaching milestones is incredibly good fun too, and very motivating. So, if you take something like this, Trainer Road for an example, it is a training app that provides carefully thought out training plans that comprise of individual workouts that are set specifically with a goal in mind, and also taking into account how much time you have available to train. And then not only that, but they're also individually tailored to your ability level set via your functional threshold power. Then you keep a track of that with regular FTP tests, again, that you have on here. So if you are the kind of person that likes setting goals, working hard, and ticking off milestones, then indoor training is definitely for you. And not only that, but you will know categorically that each workout is done to the absolute best of your ability. And not only that, but each interval as well, look, because it's holding me at my target power. Now, admittedly, if you're not lucky enough to have a smart trainer, then it won't do that, but the consistent resistance of an indoor trainer will allow you, oh, glad that 300 is over, it will allow you to ride very evenly at that set effort level. And if you are lucky enough to have a smart trainer, then if you tick the erg mode box, and it will literally keep you at that specified wattage. Well, no, I suppose a road is not going to give you a set level of resistance. However, you can still ride to a set power. You've just got to find the right roads to do it on. And when you're riding on those roads, you're also going to be developing your riding skills, which can be just as important when it comes to riding first. After all, there's no corners to go around on an indoor trainer. No, indoor training is not going to work on your bike handling skills. But what if you don't actually live near any decent roads to train on? You see, we're quite lucky here where we're based. But one thing we don't have are long, steady climbs for doing consistent intervals on. But that doesn't matter if you're in your training. You can simulate the longest climbs that you fancy. Well, having said that, there is nothing to say that just riding up long climbs hard is the most effective way to train. Because one of the other advantages of indoor training is you can actually dial up the complexity of your training sessions to make them more specific. So if you take this one from Train Road again, it's called the Wolf Jaw Plus Five. And what I'm looking at here are seven sets, lasting about four and a half minutes, and each one comprising of 20 seconds on, 15 seconds off, at 125%, and then 88% of my FTP. Try doing that on the road, huh? Uh, that's a fair point, but outside, you can just smash it up climbs. And what could be more specific in some ways more enjoyable than doing that. Oh, and if you've got a good group to ride with, that interval session that you're looking at, Sai, is effectively just like riding in a pace line. And again, that's super enjoyable and a very important skill to learn. Well, yeah, no arguments here with that, except for the fact that we're talking about ultimate performance. And group riding is inconsistent. And if you are looking at building to a physical peak, you need consistency, and that is indoor training through and through. All you need is an allotted period of time, and then you know categorically you'll be able to get your work done. Consistent, 
quality work. And again, if we turn back to our example of train road here, if you follow one of their plans, then you could religiously tick off session after session as you get it done. And yes, fair enough, you could do that outside, but indoors, you guarantee that consistency, regardless of available daylight, regardless of the weather. And yes, that does bring me to another plus point of indoor training, is that you know exactly what weather you are going to get. So no sacrificing training sessions to adverse conditions. Yeah, but what about being in the great outdoors and enjoying the sunshine? Dan, we live in the UK. That is true, but we do get one or two nice days in August sometimes. And actually, even when the weather's not quite that nice, it's still enjoyable. We're bike riders, we like being outside. And indoors, you get all sweaty. I mean, I know you start to get sweaty wherever you are, but it's gonna be particularly bad on an indoor trainer. Yeah, fair enough. I do get a little bit of a sweat on, but a fan helps a lot. And it's also not that far from my bike to the shower. All right, Sai, I can see that there is an argument that from a pure quality and interval perspective, indoor training might just take the edge, but you're not going to get the endurance you need indoors. After all, even with the best will in the world, you're unlikely to spend more than 90 minutes at a time on an indoor trainer. Well, I guess there are some dedicated hardcore people out there who might be able to do more. Joking aside though, in trying to decipher which one is better, we might be slightly missing the point. Yes, indoor training may well be slightly more effective, but for almost everybody, indoor training is all about making us faster when we're outdoors. Oh, here he is. Finally joined us, Si. I'm oh, absolutely filthy already. You wouldn't have to clean your bike training indoors. <laughs> now, while training indoors may make you screaming fit, it's not necessarily going to make you a great bike rider. And then also, if you only train outdoors, you may not get as fit as if you supplemented with indoor training as well. Now, if you are yet to subscribe to the Global Cycling Network, please make sure you do so by clicking on the glow, which is somewhere on your screen right now. After you've done that, you might want to check out this next video, which describes exactly how to do an FTP test on an indoor trainer. Yep, or for another video, particularly useful if you do ride a lot outdoors, how to clean a filthy bike.